Hi, this is Shady and in this video I'm gonna discuss arguably the most underrated and forgotten grappler and jiu-jitsu master Sadakazu Uyenishi. Sadakazu Uyenishi was very charismatic, he was very skilled. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this footage before uh, randomly on YouTube when looking up historical figures. A lot of people conflated for Mitsuyo Maeda because a lot of people talk about Maeda use this footage in particular, but that's actually Sadakazu Uyenishi. Uh, Sadakazu Uyenishi's contribution to Jiu-Jitsu is very unique and special. It was both direct and indirect self-defense and also spreading the art when uh, the art itself was dying, uh, specifically due to the surge of Judo and also uh, just the reform of Japan and the Japanese diaspora. So basically everything that Japan was going through, it was contributing to making Jiu-Jitsu a less known and less liked practice. However, uh, Sadakazu Uyenishi spread it in a very positive manner and we will see in this video. So, Sadakazu Uyenishi was born uh, in uh, Honshu, Japan and the Osaka Prefecture in 1880 in the main island of Japan. His father Kichibe Uyenishi was a very famous athlete. He was uh, very strong, he was skilled in Kenjutsu, sumo wrestling, swimming and even horsemanship. He taught his son Sadakazu Kenjutsu, which was his first martial art, and uh, Sadakazu showed an interest in military career, so his father encouraged him to go and begin training in Jiu-Jitsu, so he got in a dojo. He, he noted that he was taught in the school of Yataro Handa in Osaka, where Matayemon Tanabe taught, and Matayemon Tanabe, we all know, he was a great master. He was very efficient in his craft jiu-jitsu and later on Uyenishi uh, won several jiu-jitsu competitions during his teenage years. He was also uh, skilled in the uh, staff, the jo uh, training, uh, not just the sword, the three-foot staff and the six-foot staff. So uh, what's special about Sadakazu Uyenishi is was he was among the first to ever travel to the West and uh, his first destination and only destination was London. In uh, the year 1900, he was just 20 years old. He, he met, he was actually specially invited by Edward William Barton Wright, the founder of the martial art Bartitsu, which is uh, a very unique and playful martial art. I will cover it in a video separately. And uh, as soon as he arrived in London, he met his fellow Japanese uh, Jiu-Jitsu master Yu Kyotani, whom I covered in a separate video. And there, both of them taught in Barton Wright's academy, and also they began a career in professional wrestling, so they were very charismatic and also very skilled uh, in combat. And uh, Barton Wright would help them, he would promote these contests against larger opponents, and they would beat them and display their skills in Jiu-Jitsu. So, the club closed down in 1902, but Oyanishi continued to work and as a professional wrestler and also taught self-defense classes uh, in the academy. So his abilities, uh, he was very skilled and also his abilities allowed him to open up his own school in 1903. Just one year later, he opened up his own dojo uh, for Japanese self-defense. Uh, it's still, I believe, uh, around today at 31 Golden Square Piccadilly Circus, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Uyanishi uh, was very exotic character in the uh, Edwardian era because, you know, there weren't that many Asian men or Japanese men back in the day to go to the West because, keep in mind, Japan was closed off for centuries. So seeing someone of Asian descent and also displaying... Uh, these uh, exquisite martial arts capabilities and skill was just helped him to become very well known and uh, that's why he took up professional wrestling. So in 1905, uh, his student uh, Nelson, he assisted him in writing like an alias for professional wrestling, like a gimmick we call today, like uh, 
Undertaker or Legend Killer, whatever. He called him Raku, and Uyanishi published his first textbook jujitsu book, which called the Textbook of Jujitsu, which was the uh, very popular uh, reference work for a lot of Westerners to learn jujitsu. So, three years later, while continuing his wrestling, Uyanishi uh, taught the military and also uh, like at the army base camp. So, he was very, his contribution was very uh, unique, both in character and also just teaching self defense to the normal people, but also to the military. That's how much effective his style and his jiu jitsu was, and also his teaching capabilities. So during 1907-1908, uh, he went on a very professional tour, Spain, Portugal and other uh, European countries teaching jiu-jitsu and doing exhibitions very similar to uh, what Tomita and Maeda did, but in America, uh, however, Sadakazu did it in Europe. Uh, so he, he worked diligently uh, to spread the art. So that's why he is Credited, and in my opinion, he is very underrated. We talk about Taro Miyake and Yukio Tani when it comes to Jiu Jitsu and Europe, but we fail to mention Sadakazu many times, and this is why I'm making this video. So, uh, in 1908, just after his tour, he decided to return to Japan, uh, leaving his school in charge of his uh, senior student or one of his best students, William Garud, who was uh, related to. Edith Garud, whom we mentioned in the video, the legendary woman of Jiu Jitsu. Um, they say that after his death is uh, unknown, they say it was around the end of World War II, so even his death is uh, undocumented, which is very unfortunate. Uh, he deserves a lot more credit and a lot more uh, attention, and to needs to be, you know, acknowledged for his contribution. Uh, so, Sadakazu influenced a lot of people to do not only learning jujitsu but also teaching and pioneering women to show how effective they are in society and fighting for women's rights, specifically Edith Garud, um, whom he, she and William uh, made the, uh, the book The Complete Jujitsu Win, published in 1914, uh, which was a standard reference work for Edith. Uh, I mentioned about this, Edith was someone who would fight for women's right to vote, uh, etc. and would go on uh, like these little rescue missions and they would use aliases and cover-ups and use uh, jiu-jitsu as a way to protect themselves and fight for their basic rights as women. There's also Emily Watts. Emily Watts uh, she is one of the first female jiu-jitsu instructors, not just in Japan, but in the world in general. Uh, she published a book in 1906, The Fine Art of Jiu-Jitsu, which was the first English work to be uh, put in the Kodokan Judo Kata, uh, or I'm sorry, the first English work to record Kodokan Judo Kata. So, um, see what I mean by both influencing jiu-jitsu directly and indirectly having an influence on people. Uh, for example, people like William Garud and Edith Garud used jiu-jitsu to create a better society, not only teaching self-defense and the military and also contributing to the entertainment of people through professional wrestling. So. This is a man that has contributed a lot, but sadly it is, he is very unknown. Uh, even his death is pretty much unknown, which is, I find, very unfortunate. And that's why I decided to make this video to talk a little bit about his life, his touring, how he taught, and also he was very skilled even as a little child. And he comes from a martial background, his father in particular. So. It's very important to contribute and make this world a better place through these arts. Now, if he wasn't a competitive professional wrestler, that also wouldn't have mattered because, like I said, when you compete, that's all for you, which is very nice, but uh, giving back is what matters and 
teaching self-defense and touring Europe and teaching jiu-jitsu is very important and very noble in my eyes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this a little history lesson. If you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.